Okay, good evening everybody. Thank you all for coming out tonight for CPAC's Community Resource Night presentation. We're really excited to have six great presenters here from our community to give you some information about different resources and services in our community that you may want to access for your children. Um, we have six presenters, so we're going to go through each one. They'll speak about their program a little bit, um, and then at the end, they'll be in the back if you want to go up and speak with them and if you have additional questions. So I just want to thank our Special Assistant Advisory Committee who put a lot of time into coordinating this and getting all these presenters for us. So I hope you enjoy it. And uh, the first group we're going to bring up is Melly's Swim Lessons. Um, my name is Melissa, a.k.a. Melly. Um, I have a 70-year-old son who has autism. And so I'm also a um, therapist in early intervention for the past, like, 13 years. Um, as soon as my son got diagnosed, that's how I got into it. Um, so I love my job. Um, but I'm also teaching swim lessons for kids with special needs. And any age, it's usually, usually my EI kids or the kids who come. Um, right now, I'm wrapping up lessons at Kim Swim, and then I have my own pool at my house in the summer. Um, does anybody have any questions? What's up? My house is in Rockaway, so I'm really close. Um, I have, you can go on Facebook, I have some pictures. Uh, Nellie's Swim Lessons at Facebook page. Yes? Do you have any certifications? I do. Thank you. Why not? <laughs> So not only do I have some personal experience of my own child with autism and working in early intervention, I am also a Red Cross certified swim instructor. So, yes. What ages, if you're looking for any ages or? Any ages. Okay. So you little kids, but even a bigger kid who just needs like water safety, that kind of thing you can teach. Yeah, that's one of the things, like, you know, a lot of people have some lessons at the Y or, you know, wherever, but they, I find that they don't really teach the, that safety part, like how how to climb out on the ladder. There isn't an appropriate way to climb out the ladder without them slipping and falling. Um, grabbing the side of the pool, you know, if you fall in, um, who to call, like what happens if you fall in, what do you do? So that's part, I mean, that's a big part of the Red Cross is safety, you know, as well as swimming. Um, but I, I love the safety course, especially with the little kids. And you hear so many kids with autism drowning in your own pool, or other people's pools, or lakes, or. How big are your classes, and do you try to group kids together with similar needs? So I don't do group lessons right now, but I can and I have. Um, I don't really like to do, I wouldn't do more than two because especially if it depends on their needs. I can't physically, you know, I'm not, I don't want to hold two kids. How am I going to teach them to swim, you know, if neither one of them can swim? So I normally just do the private lessons for a half hour. Um, but I do have a lot of EI families where there's, you know, brothers or a brother and sister. Um, you know, sometimes I'll let them, you know, come in for free or just like siblings. But. How do you structure your lessons? It all depends on the child. You know, it's so hard to say that. Like, you know, I have some kids who are petrified of water. I have some kids who have no fear of the water. You know, so I start with safety, or I start with you know a bubble or floating on the ground. I mean, it just there is no set structure per kid. There's just not. <laughs> Every kid is so different. <laughs> yeah. With, how do you deal with children if they're nonverbal? Well, my son is nonverbal too. So, um, we do a lot of singing, and I don't know, it's like different kids, so they're nonverbal, but do they do sign language? Do they have, they do nothing. Um, do they do any verbal imitation? A little bit. Okay, so verbal imitation is huge. Um, receptively, does the child understand what you're saying to them? No. Nothing, not one thing. I find like, and I'm not, I'm just like, I find that a lot not of these very, kids who are nonverbal, receptively, they really understand a lot of things, but they can't <coughs> get out, you know, what they want to say to you. So if he I said to someone, follow directions. I'm though. sorry? He won't follow directions. So how Well, would that you... could be a behavioral more part, mm -hmm. or it could be that he doesn't understand. Um, so the good thing about the water, it's not like I'm not trying to teach a math or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, or a, some kind of subject or whatever. It's really just to swim. So I'm physically using my arms and my hands and, 
you know, parts of me to help him. Because I'm not really, it's okay that he can't talk back to me. I think. I, I've just done curious. all types of kids. Do beginner swimmers, or I mean, my daughter can swim enough to stay afloat, but I'm always looking for her to like improve her skills. But like I always do private at the Y sometimes, and they, they claim to be sending somebody that has you know can deal with autistic kids, but it's never worked out in the past. So, so what are you trying to teach her like different strokes and stuff? Yeah, yeah. just to improve, you know, to be like legitimately swimming and yeah. not just. I can absolutely do that, but if you're looking for like somebody to be like, I mean, I was on swim when I was younger, but that that's not really my specialty is. You know, for somebody who wants to be a professional swimmer or learn, you know, the butterfly, I forget, I can't even well, do the butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for somebody who wants to be able to actually learn the breathing and the blowing, you know, or a breaststroke or a backstroke on your back, yes, I can do oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have um, business cards back there. Um, have any questions? Let me know. Limitless, and they're going to come up and tell us what Limitless is. All right, thank you. Hello. Hi, I am Crystal Farr. I am the director of the Limitless Center, which is um, like a couple feet this way, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's right at 30 Ryder Ave. It's between Apollo Tire and the, the Norman Dean Funeral Home. Yes, yeah, so we're right there. Um, so we offer services for individuals from 3 to 21. Um, we're a developmental center. Um, and we have social skills, life skills classes, special events. We mostly specialize in um, teens and young adults at the center right here. Um, but we also have a developmental summer program that runs um, in Denville at the Celebrate the Children's School um, in the summer. It's a five-week developmental program and that's ages uh, 3 to 21. So we offer individual ser uh, services like uh, floor time, counseling, um, assessments, and then for teens and young adults, we offer events like we go bowling, we'll go, um, you know, we just went to Jenkinson's Aquarium and the zoo um, with a big group of kids. We actually have some awesome pictures of it on Facebook if you guys want to see. So we did, you know, during spring break and um, like the winter break, we follow the Denville calendar. We'll have um, stuff going on, you know, during those times so that, you know, our kids are still getting some social time and having something to do um, during those times. Um, like I said, we do the summer program. We do that from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then we do an aftercare program that's from 1 to 4 with different um, activities, classes. Um, we'll go out on field trips and stuff. Um, and I guess that's what we offer. Any questions? Um, so what do you have, like, from now <coughs> until the summer? Like, I guess you have different programs, like, during the school year you have stuff for kids? Mm -hmm. What, what yeah. do you have? And so, like, what are you going to schedule now? So yes, we do. No, 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 it's totally fine. Time. I if, I wish I could remember everything. So we actually have, you know, quite a bit going on. We have something going on every day. Okay. So we have social <laughs> development classes, um, social, social skills, and we do it for different age groups. We have one on Monday that's from 18 to... 24, 25 is our oldest, uh, and then we have one on Thursday that's more for 14 to 17, so they'll work on, you know, different skills. Um, we have a digital arts class, um, we have a sci-fi and fantasy club that Andrew over here runs, um, so a lot of our teens are really into, like, sci-fi and fantasy and role-playing games and, you know, world-building and stuff, so we get all of them together and then we'll um, do a different activity every week. Um, with the same kids. Um, so we do that on Tuesdays. We have um, a growth of the mind class, which is really cool. One of our um, long-term teachers, she's been there, I think probably from the beginning, Karen McDowell. She's, she runs the growth of the mind, which is uh, about executive functioning, you know, higher level thinking, problem solving. Um, we have that. Cooking actually just ended today, so we have that on Wednesday. So that goes until like 6 o'clock. So we get a group of kids together, and, and they cook. Um, and learn, you know, base skills. Um, we have a pop culture group, actually, that one of the parents that was here earlier, her, his son, or her son actually goes to it. So that's focusing on social media 
and different trends and what music kids are listening to in high school, what what are you know kids talking about. So you know sometimes it's hard for them to pick up on what those interests are with their peers. So we kind of help them. We'll be like, oh well, this is what's trending on YouTube this week. You know, let's make a you know a Facebook account and let's friend your you know the people in your high school. Um, we you know, we'll go into different rooms and they'll Skype each other just to get the feeling of what that's like. So hopefully they'll eventually use that with their friends. Um, and that's on Thursdays. And then we have a uh, sports group on Fridays. So we have something going on uh, pretty much every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 14 to 17 group now, are these children with high functioning kids with autism? Are they... We have a range of, of students. So we have some that... I mean, yeah, you could definitely, you know, have <coughs> functioning. We also you know, different. They use different modes of communication. Um, you know, different abilities. Um, we have a really wide range, and we, you know, part of the developmental philosophy is we, you know, target each kid individually, and okay. you know what what their needs <coughs> are, and we accommodate for that. Okay. I have a six-year-old. I know that you're primarily for the older kids. Mm -hmm. So, what specifically? I think you said summer camps. Mm -hmm. So, what would you have like? for a six-year-old? Um, well, we have the summer program, okay. uh, you said, and then we also have um, peer, direct peer groups that we'll run. Um, we're actually in the process of, um, I actually spoke to a counselor today, we're in the process of getting one for younger kids because we've been primarily <laughs> getting the age group that we're mostly targeting and we're starting to get trickle in of, you know, six to 11 we're getting um, more recently. So we have a peer group um, that's set up to run uh, that we want actually start going because we've gotten some interest in it. Um, so we have that and then we have individual services like counseling, floor time, um, and then so peer, yeah, peer group, uh, floor time, and individual counseling I think is what we have for that now. And then in our, in the breaks that we have, so like spring break or winter break, stuff like that, we do have those mini camps and that's from 3 to 21. Um, so and in the peer groups, what, like what would they be focusing in on or? Um, mostly just like it's more of a social group, so like it's how to learning. Play? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I have two questions. So a lot of kids do extended school year. Does your summer program work around that, or it's instead of that? It's instead of that. It's so it's. Of that. Do you have a separate session like in August when they have that downtime? I think we're actually going to try to do that this okay. year. Uh, we've done that in the past, um, and I think we're going to try to do that again. So I mean. I don't, I don't, I'm actually not familiar with exactly when the extended school years run for each, you know, district or anything. Ours runs from July 10th to August, yep, July 10th to August 9th. So I'm not sure when Denville's, like, extended school year runs. Okay. That's the same as Denville. Is it the same? Yeah. Like, one week difference. Yeah. So that, I don't, and I don't know what time that runs to either. I'm sorry. Actually, do you guys know what time that runs to? The extended school year? Eleven thirty. Till when? Mostly at till 11.30. Until 11.30? Okay, so we actually then, we do have, ours runs till 1, the base one, and then we have the um, extended hours program, which runs from 1 to 4. Um, so, I mean, there's no reason that both couldn't happen as well. So the 1 to 4 is where we have, like, art and music, and, you know, it's mostly based around um, building relationships between, you know, the students and that. And then we have um, field trips Wednesdays and Fridays, and... So that's, we don't really incorporate any sort of academics into that extended hours program. It's mostly social. And when you say counselor, what kind of counselor, what kind of service is that? Um, let me actually look. What is, do you know what Mady's? <coughs> Mady is a LCSW, a licensed clinical social worker. So it's like really one-on-one -on -one to work on specific issues like anxiety or... She does that and she also is open to different, to groups as well. If we get, okay. uh, you know, a group of individuals that want to start a group, she'll do that as well. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Questions? How is the um, executive problem solving program administered by the teacher individually? In a, in a it's group? a group. Okay. okay. Would that be appropriate for kids with ADHD? Absolutely. So it's not just for kids on the spectrum? No, no, we're has... for anybody with, anyway. you know, okay. anyone really. We also have, you know, um, you know, peer models that are there as well. So we have really have a, a really wide range. Um, kids and we tailor you know all of our interactions and all of our programs to the individual so and does that also target the age span 
like, do you have different groups for different ages? Yes, so if we do get enough, you know, we do have different groups. So for social skills now, we actually we might even have to open up a third because we've gotten so many people interested in it. Um, so we'll group them based on age or developmental level, really, you know, what's more appropriate. Um, so yeah, we will break up uh, off into different groups depending on age and developmental level. Including with the executive functioning groups? Yes. Any other questions? Okay, guess that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. And then also we have, you know, my card and pamphlets and all that back there. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we're going to hear from the Great Kids Place. So big and So I'm Michelle Parkins. I am the owner and occupational therapist at Great Kids Place. Um, I have one other OT that has joined me as well. So we provide occupational therapy services. Um, our specialty is sensory processing disorder and autism and dyspraxia. Anything in the realm, right? SPD has a million different ways that you want to say it. But um, I did most of my, my history is actually in autism. Uh, celebrate the children, I know them very well, <laughs> for 10 years. Um, during that time, I became faculty for a DIR floor time academy, so I still do that. Um, and then I met Lucy Jane Miller, who is like the godmother of sensory processing disorder, and she invited me to go out with her and work with her. Um, so even though it was a hard decision to leave my comfort world, I did that, and it was amazing, and it opened my eyes to all of these other kids who have sensory processing challenges who are not on the spectrum. Um, which was wonderful because my son turns out to be one as well. So <laughs> it was a nice life experience. But um, so after I did that, I decided I, it was time for me to open my own place so I can reach kids who um, have a, a variety of challenges and may or may not be um, identified yet and really help parents who say there's something going on that I don't know what's going on and nobody can really put their finger on it, so you know, can you help me kind of tease out these daily activities that are difficult and why? Um, so we do, parents are involved in every session. Um, we do goals together, real life goals. What, is your, what do you want to actually see happen? Not, you know, my child can you know, balance on a balance beam for five minutes, like who cares, right? My, my child can go to a restaurant and stay seated and enjoy the dinner and not be you know bombarded by the sounds and the sights and everything around them. Um, we can go to the grocery store without a meltdown. We can you know these are some of the things I want to hear about. Is what are the daily challenges that you're having and you know what part of that is attributed to sensory difficulties? Um, so I have a pretty fun sensory gym. Um, <laughs> it's got pretty much anything you would want equipment wise. Um, I not do birthday parties, so that's a big question from all the kids, right? Can I have my birthday party here? Um, siblings are also welcome to join sessions. Um, we do, you know, that's daily life too, right? They need to play together. Like, they need to understand the differences that they have in play and the differences they have in life. So, we do a lot of just whole family work whenever we can. Um, what else? I offer handwriting groups, which um, is based on a handwriting program that I developed called Connect Experience, right? It's all music-based, so each letter has a musical tone that goes with it. Um, it's very developmental, starts with whole body, and then we do tons of whole body work with, with the letter, with the sounds, um, and then eventually get to pen and paper. So for the kids who have motor planning challenges and dyspraxia, they're not listening to verbal directions to make the letter. So that's the most difficult thing with traditional handwriting programs is they have to follow multiple set directions, um, which is very hard for a lot of kids. So, um, and it's a lot of fun. So kids who've been working on handwriting for years and years and years, it's like a new, a new way to kind of look at it and they, they find it more interesting. Um, and then we also offer yoga, which right now we do in the summer, but I hope to expand that to offer it through, you know, the the year, so we'll see. Um, that's it. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Can you do the zones? 
I do. Yep. So I use the zones of regulation program. Um, uh, I see huge success with it, and uh, it's a really nice program that's easy to carry over at home too. And we do a lot of training and use with it in the sessions, and then the parents have exactly all of the things that <coughs> in the sessions to bring at home to use as well. Yeah. What ages are is the handwriting program for? All ages. So what I typically do is when we're going to run a new session, I just put like a Facebook blast out, and then collect everybody's ages and what they're working on and then we group it based on like the appropriate groups and they're usually small like two three four kids um and one ot yeah. where are you located oh sorry that would be important <laughs> <laughs> in rockaway um in pine street commons so it's i guess it's rockaway borough and someone doesn't have to be already uh, classified to come? Um, no. I teach pretty well, and I have someone who that's really needs to go. Yeah, and, yeah, I actually um, um, have a lot of kids who are like preschool age where they didn't necessarily qualify for early intervention, yeah. but something is not allowing them to participate at their full capacity. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, no, they don't have to Sometimes we can help figure out what direction to go to if we can mm -hmm. kind of pick through some of the other yeah. pieces and see what's happening. <coughs> yeah. What age group is the yoga? The yoga is the same. So right now we're, it's the interest right now has been between <coughs> we just announced it. I want to say five and nine, which was the same last last year. It ended up being about that age group as well. But we'll do the same thing with that as we do with the handwriting groups, is kind of pair everybody where they should be. Yeah. And they do get to play in the gym for <laughs> yoga. <laughs> so we try to do quiet, you know, good yoga stuff, and then they get to play in the gym because it's very necessary. <laughs> Okay, next up we're going to hear from the uh, Child Development and Autism Center from Gory of Children's Hospital. Thank you. Hello, I'm Tara Gleason. I'm the manager of the Child Development and Autism Center. We've been around for a long time. A long time. Long time. <laughs> That's right. So it's, it's probably about 34, 35 years. Uh, one year we lost a grant and weren't there and then started back again. Um, but over the years, it became the Child Development Center, but we did at least 50% autism. So we were really fortunate. About three years ago, they had a huge fundraiser called the Mansions in May. They're having it again this year. Really nice fundraiser um, where they rent out a mansion. They have designers do all the rooms. People come during the month of May to pay to see it, and then that money's all donated. So um, they gave that money to us to develop an autism center. So we are now Child Development and Autism Center. We've moved out of the hospital, and if anyone had been there way back when, it was awful. Yeah. We were in the, the basement, basically. You know, it used to be the nursing residence, um, where nurses used to live at the hospital, the nursing students, and had chipping paint, and uh, awful. Our new center is absolutely beautiful. I have to brag, we work with the architects. It is sensory friendly. It is very, you know, we have the lighting, that the dim the lighting, um, noise sensitive. We have headphones for kids who need it. So it's really very, very nice. I get very apprehensive about coming to any of these things to speak. Um, because we have about an eight to nine month waiting list to get in the door. So we really prioritize early diagnosis. So we really try to get our younger kids in. Our early intervention therapists are wonderful at really suggesting developmental evals when we need it. <laughs> we now have eight of us diagnosing autism, four physicians and four nurse practitioners working on getting children in to do an early diagnosis. But then we continue to follow um, children, adolescents, and young adults until they're 21. So, you know, again, priority is the diagnosis, getting them hooked up with the right services. Uh, we now have um, expanded. We have speech <coughs> and occupational therapy really focused on treating kids on the spectrum. Um, we have a full-time ABA therapist. And our full-time ABA therapist is not there. Obviously, it's one ABA therapist. She's not there to provide ABA therapy for the masses. She's there for people who don't get insurance coverage and really want to learn about ABA. She does family training. She'll do targeted behavior. So if your child's doing well and they're, they're doing okay with their program at school, but you have a few behaviors at home you want to get through, you know, toilet training or whatever it may be, she'll really do some targeted interventions for family. So that's really been a very nice um, addition to our staff 
Uh, we also have a full-time autism care navigator. So when families are diagnosed initially, Zoe will sit with them and really go over the diagnosis. But she's there all along the way to transition. You know, and I feel that's where we were missing a lot. You know, we're real good at getting the little kids in and getting it started. But what do we do as they get older and we want to transition? So Zoe couldn't be here tonight, but I'm taking everyone else's wonderful um, information back to her. And she keeps some very good resources on a parent calls and says, I need water safety. I need swim classes. We try to really tie that in. So if anyone has any information they want to, I, yeah, I took yourself <laughs> pass on to me. It's really great. And, I'm and again, because we draw from a very big area. We do have a lot of Denville out. Um, so what we do for the older kids, if you're already diagnosed, a lot of people still come in for the medical piece. Um, they like to be followed just to see, is there anything else that maybe they're missing? They like to look at the holistic approach. Um, so we try to do that. We don't do a lot of integrative medicine, but right downstairs from us, we have the integrative medicine division. They do a lot of mindfulness. That's really their big push where we send a lot of kids. It seems to be the buzzword in almost anything going on, but it's great for all kids to deal with anxiety. Um, so that group, they really call it the mindful teens group, but they'll take kids down to about 11 to work on mindfulness. Um, they also have an alternative medicine practitioner there. We really don't engage in the alternative medicine, um, but downstairs in integrative medicine, if people are interested, she's very um, comprehensive in, in those kind of treatments. Um, as kids get older, they may also need medication, so we do a lot of medication management. There is no medication approved to treat autism, and that's unfortunate, and we have a lot of research going on. Hopefully that'll change in the next few years, but we can treat symptoms of autism. So we work with families. If it's hyperactivity, we use the ADHD meds. If it's repetitive behavior, we may use Ris Risperdal or Abilify. If it's anxiety or depression, we might use an, an antidepressant like Zoloft. So we do a lot of education <coughs> management for kids with autism, um, as well as any other developmental disability. And so many kids start out with a spectrum diagnosis, and then as the time goes on, it might morph into more of an ADHD or just communication disorder. So we definitely see kids with all of those. And that's why we didn't distinctly separate ourselves because so much of this overlaps, so all of the child development issues. So we are one center, child development and autism, but luckily we've really expanded our services. Um, if anyone ever feels that they really need to get someone in quickly, I am, especially for the Denville, I'm from Denville, I'm very open. I have a back, back line if you need to call me and I will get kids in, because unfortunately if you call the front desk, it is about an eight month waiting list. Um, so please. You're going to give out your bat line? My bat line, just to my gentle oh, friends. You better not share it. Yeah. 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 I actually had someone saw me on it the other day, and they said, oh, somebody posted it on Google. I'm like, are you kidding? Oh, I can't no. put it out there. Oh, no. But if you really need it, please reserve it. But if you have someone you really feel, especially the early intervention age that needs to get in for diagnosis, let us know. Uh, I know you said there's a waiting list, but if people do um, have a need and they come to you, do you actually send them to other places or give them, you know, some direction? or Where? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That's what I'm so, asking. So, yeah. so it's hard. If you're looking for a developmental pediatrician, we're actually probably one of the best. Um, so a lot of people come to us from CHOP. Apparently, when you call CHOP, they'll email you when they're down to a year waiting list. And Hershey Medical is about a year. So I have a lot of families who come from all over because it's not really, unfortunately, any better. Children specialized. So to find a developmental pediatrician, again, that field is so small. Um, there's children specialized, there's herself, there's some at St. Joe's, and I heard they're up to about nine months to ten months as well. So unfortunately, now you can go to a neurologist for a diagnosis as well. Um, sometimes they, it's a little different, it's not the developmental piece, but neurologists can also diagnose autism. Um, but in terms of for new diagnosis, most people do come to developmental pediatricians. Um, I just want to say, like, I've been waiting for an appointment for my son for a very long time. He's five, and I was told, like, to wait until he gets a certain age. I literally called every week, and they called me back and got me within within six weeks. So don't keep calling. Like even though you have that appointment, keep calling. Keep oh, calling. absolutely, the squeaky yeah. wheel, one hundred percent. Yeah, they're gonna be like, oh my god, this mom, and they're gonna give you the appointment because they don't want you to call. I agree. Like, don't tell my front desk I said that. But one hundred percent, absolutely. <laughs> and no, you. I just yeah. gotta say, like, they are amazing. Like, I could cry right now. My son doesn't do anything. Hates medical stuff, hates appointments. He walked right in there, sat with the doctor, did everything he had to do. I'm so glad to and hear that. Thank you. Answers. Yeah, we we tried really so hard. We were so lucky to come in and get to build the center from the ground up. Where the old center was intimidating, we try to make it as as an, a good experience it was as possible. He was like, so. "Where can I play?" Oh. <laughs> we were so in. I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you. and again, that's why I said, if you really need it, just reach out. And again, be be aggressive. Keep calling. And and we do have cancellations. You know, people yeah, again, yeah. if it's eight nine months out, all of a sudden people get another appointment yeah. or they change yeah. plans or yeah. you know. So definitely, there are cancellations, and it's the people who get their paperwork in on time and keep calling mm -hmm. who get in. Okay. All right. So thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, just let me know. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now we have um, Believe in Me. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We are Believe in Me.
Eve and May, and it's very nice to see everybody. We actually work with many people. Oh, hey, Em. We work with a lot of different people. We are referring um, clients all the time to the Child Development and Autism Center, and of course, we're very friendly with Michelle, the OT over there. So, and Melly. Oh, and Melissa, of course. <laughs> yeah, and Melly. So, my name is Cassandra. I'm a board certified behavior analyst. I've been in the field for about seven years now. My background is verbal behavior assessment as well as ABA. And I've also been working in early intervention for the past several years. I'm Bethany. I'm a special educator. I'm dual certified in K through five in special education. I've been working in the field since 2008, specializing in children on the spectrum, but also developmental delays. I also have worked in early intervention, so we specialize in that younger age group. Um, and I'm certified to do the BDI assessment. So a lot of the kids that are coming into early intervention, that's kind of their first assessment they're getting. Um, so Cassandra and I came across each other's path in early intervention, and we really looked at what our families needed. And what we saw was a huge gap between the family strip, the family based on the one-on-one -on -one in the home as right. opposed to the social aspect of things. So we start with social skills groups, and then we also offer private uh, behavioral therapy and semi-private parent training and caretaker training. Mm -hmm. And we also provide professional development. We have gone to Montclair State University and presented there as well. You want to talk a little bit about the ABI in our session? Sure. So we are able to provide therapy to children that have developmental delays, behavioral challenges, speech delays. It's not necessarily only children with an autism diagnosis, which is the common misconception with ABI. We make everything very functional. Um, Michelle was talking before about that's wonderful if your child knows all their colors, but can you go to a restaurant? Can you go to the grocery store? Do your parents know... Um, what a tantrum looks like versus a meltdown. Does that matter when you're treating it behaviorally? So we want to make everything very functionally based. We are very big on parent involvement. Absolutely. I don't want you looking at your curriculum book for your child and going, not a clue what's going on here. So yes, it is evidence-based. Yes, it's data-based. But we are very big on the parent involvement. We do a lot of parent training. We want to incorporate you as much as possible. We are writing our own curriculum. In there, there are ideas for carryover, being an early intervention. We understand we might work with your child five hours a week. You are there 24-7. So that's wonderful if he does it for me. If he doesn't do it for you, we have not done our job. So we offer private and semi-private sessions right now. Children do not need a diagnosis to work with us. We are in network with Aetna, and we are working on becoming in network with more insurance companies because we want to help our families to the best extent that we possibly can. We also provide invoices so those that mm -hmm. we are out of network with can submit them through their insurance companies. And because we're the board certified, you are able to potentially get reimbursement. Yes. So um, our social skills groups, I'm going to speak a little bit on that. They are hour-long groups. They start with an opening uh, circle time. We pick a theme every single um, session. So it's a social theme. Uh, currently right now it's turn-taking. And we have a social story about what turn-taking is. And then the children get to practice the skill, generalize the skill, and then they move on to a fine motor activity where it's tabletop, they're sitting, they're taking turns, passing materials, it may be some craft activity, it may be a cooking activity, um, a lot of sensory-based activities, the tactile input. And then from there, we move on to a gross motor activity. Uh, sequencing we're working on, we're working on a lot of uh, cognitive skills as well. Uh, why do we do this and all things like we're supporting all areas of development as we're doing this as well as the social skills. They go through the social, um, the gross motor activity and they have a sensory bend and then they end with a closing circle and the last five minutes are reserved for our staff members to speak with the parents about the individual's progress during that session and strategies to carry over at home. So we really do support our families we love our families. <laughs> I mean, our we're really invested are. in our children. So. Our classes are very small. I say five kids is our max, max. right now. We'll and take up to six, but if it's not functional. on the functional of the children. And right now we have a one-to-one -one staff ratio. Mm -hmm. So the groups are led by myself. And because, again, we have that credential, you can submit to insurance to try to get reimbursement back if you're not in network with Aetna. And then Bethany's there as well. So you've got both of us in the room, plus all of our staff members receive on the hands-on training every week they come to separate training outside of that 
and we're making sure our staff is very supported as well. So we haven't found that the one-on-one -on -one staff ratio is anywhere, but we do have pretty there. amazing staff as well that sometimes makes celebrity appearances. <laughs> <laughs> and our other staff members are actually all in the field as well. They're either special educators or graduate going for level. their graduate levels. Yes, yeah. they're going for their masters and their BCBI. So we supervise them and make sure that they continuously get the education and support they need as well. So we're kind of looking at it at all dynamics. Mm -hmm. So exciting news though, we just opened a new location in Rockaway on Pine Street Commons, right by Michelle, who a lot of our clients, we realized we were uh, trading clients off quite frequently. They would lead social skills group and go to Michelle's or someone was just coming from Michelle's. Um, so conveniently, we are in Rockaway and right on exit 37. And I think that's about it, right? Is there any other questions that we cover? Yes. What was that? What ages do you focus on? Zero to 12. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, we're getting in those, we, we've been working in early intervention, so mm -hmm. we've been getting in a lot of those kids around that age who okay. need the extra support and extra, they need that social piece. And a lot of our families too that we saw in early intervention that left early intervention and said, <laughs> Now what? They so we, now they call <laughs> they us. Call us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No other questions? Okay. Thank oh, you. There was about no questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Our our last um, presenter is speech therapy center. <laughs> Hello, my name is Cheryl Kaplan from the Speech Therapy Center in Denville. I am a certified and licensed speech pathologist since 1990. I opened my practice here in Denville on Broadway um, in 1996, having worked in uh, education, special education. Um, also, I have experience working with geriatric patients, so I had um, experience in all the different populations, but I love children. And so I decided one day, I don't know why, but I figured I'm going to try it and see how it goes. And I opened up my practice, and it's been amazing. Um, I work with children, uh, preschoolers, school age, um, adolescents, high school. So we work uh, with many children. I have many wonderful associates that work for me. Eileen Charney is one of them. And each of them specialize in different areas. Um, I myself work um, also in a special ed school, working with um, many language learning um, disabled children. Been there for 20 years, and um, you know we work in the areas of receptive language, expressive language, articulation, children that have apraxia, um, which is a motor planning speech disorder. Um, work with children who have dysarthria. We also uh, work with pragmatics, social language skills. And um, I personally do a lot of oral motor therapy, and I'm actually in the process of training to become an orofacial myologist, which is an, um, it's a specialization in the area of tongue thrust. Um, that's something very new in the area, so I'm in the process of becoming a certified <coughs> orofacial myologist. So, um, you know, I have many, um, several parents here who, uh, if you ever need a reference, certainly can give references. Um, our center also provides early intervention services, so we're a vendor for the state of New Jersey. We're also, um, of, uh, how do you say, um, an approved um, vendor for public schools in New Jersey to provide speech language therapy services and evaluation services. So, um, you know, we started very small in my little one room schoolhouse, and, you know, I'm very grateful that it's expanded to where it is. Um, so if you have any questions, certainly answer. Sure. Hi, um, are you prompt trained? I am not prompt trained. I've, I've taken prompts, so I do use prompt in my therapy, but I'm not a purist. I don't just do prompts. Um, I have therapists also that have also taken the courses. Um, several of them are prompt trained. Okay. But my, my, I'm, uh, me and myself, I'm not, um, you know, certified. Okay. Prompt. Questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 
so that concludes our presentation. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. And uh, our presenters might be around if you want to speak with any of them for a few minutes. Um, feel free to and, and help yourself to some coffee or cookies or anything like that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.